County, clear to land 3-5, right? Warrior 1-1 one, one Delta, descend and maintain 4,000. 2 Mike Mike, taxi to Alpha. King Airy, Tango Charlie, clear for takeoff. 3-3 three, three Golf, when able, right turn. How can so many aircraft operate this smoothly? Without the essential services of radar and air traffic control, the skies around most airports would be hopelessly clogged. This program introduces you to the common facilities found at controlled airports and explains how you, as a VFR pilot, can efficiently use the services they provide. We'll also expand on the communication skills needed to fly into and out of areas where an authorization from air traffic control is required. Let's begin with a look at transponders. Transponders are an integral part of the ATC radar beacon system. They enhance the identification of aircraft and help controllers provide better separation. The process begins when a radar antenna sends out a discrete interrogation signal. This triggers a reply from your transponder equipment. The reply is decoded and displayed on the controller's screen as a distinctive blip. The display of information on the screen depends on what you have set on your transponder. This knob turns your transponder on and off. When it is turned to the standby position, the unit is on, but it doesn't reply to interrogation signals. This position helps the transponder warm up before you need to use it. Sometimes the controller may ask you to select standby to reduce the clutter on the radar screen. Cessna 241, squawk standby. When you select on, the transponder begins to reply to interrogations from radar sites. This setting is sometimes referred to as the normal or mode A setting. The altitude or mode C setting is selected by turning the knob to ALT. If your aircraft has automatic altitude reporting equipment, your altitude will be displayed on the controller's screen. This light is called the reply monitor light. It flashes every time the transponder replies to an interrogation. It's a good indicator that the transponder is working. You can also test the transponder operation by pressing the test button. If the transponder is functioning properly, the reply light will light up. The ident button is used to help the controller identify your aircraft. When you press it, a signal is transmitted that causes your display to blossom on the radar screen. When you hear the controller say, Cessna 241, ident. Press and release the button. Never ident unless you receive a request from ATC. These windows are used to select the appropriate transponder code. Some codes are assigned by ATC, while others you select yourself. The codes and procedures for selecting them are covered in your textbook. Let's turn our attention now to the operating procedures at an airport with a control tower. We'll include some of the typical communications that occur during departure and arrival. The number of controllers varies from one tower to the next. Each person has a specific duty or position and, generally, controls one frequency. One of these positions is ground control. This person issues taxi instructions to aircraft moving to and from the active runway, as well as from one point to another on the ramp. Before you taxi from the parking area, you need to get an authorization from the ground controller. Most communications can be divided into just four basic elements. Jeffco Ground, Cessna 52241 at the General Aviation Ramp, ready to taxi for takeoff. The ground controller will tell you to taxi to the runway in use and provide you with existing wind information, the altimeter setting, and any pertinent remarks. At a busy airport, a tremendous frequency congestion would occur if the controller repeated this information to every pilot requesting a taxi clearance. To relieve this, many large airports have a specific frequency for recorded airport information, known as Automatic Terminal Information Service, or ATIS. 
Each time the recording is updated, it is given a new phonetic letter for identification. Sudden airport information Delta, 1245 Zulu weather, temperature 85, dew point 47. Wind 120 at 13, altimeter 3007. Landing and departing runways 17 left and 17 right. Advise the controller on initial contact, you have information Delta. Airports with a high volume of traffic may have a position called clearance delivery. It's primarily an IFR service, but can be used by VFR pilots to help improve the coordination of departing traffic. The controller provides you with a heading, altitude, transponder code, and departure control frequency to use after takeoff. If you want to use clearance delivery, contact the controller after listening to ATIS and before calling ground control. Inform the controller of your aircraft type, direction of flight, and that you have listened to the ATIS information. Ashland Clearance Delivery, Warrior 81312, with information hotel, VFR northbound. Warrior 81312, after departure, fly runway heading, maintain 3000, squawk 4505. Departure frequency will be 124.6. Contact ground 121.9. When you contact ground control at an airport that does not have a clearance delivery, but provides radar services to VFR pilots, you should include the direction of flight or your destination. In this situation, the ground controller will give you a transponder code and departure frequency. Sudden ground, Cessna 62740 at the general aviation ramp, ready to taxi 17 left, VFR southeast bound with information Delta. Cessna 740, taxi to runway 17 left, departure frequency will be 119.3, squawk 1120. With this clearance, you are authorized to cross all taxiways and runways on your way to 17 left, but it does not authorize you to cross or taxi onto the assigned takeoff runway. Once the pre-takeoff checklist is complete and you're ready to depart, taxi up to the holding line, switch from the ground control to the tower frequency and let the tower controller know that you are ready to take off. Be sure to give your direction of flight or destination. Sudden tower, Cessna 62740, 17 left, ready for takeoff, VFR southeast bound. If other airplanes are in the process of landing, the controller will advise you to hold short. This means that you are not authorized to taxi onto the runway and should remain at the holding line. When the final approach path is clear, the tower might ask you to taxi into position and hold. This authorizes you to taxi onto the runway and line up on the center line for takeoff. At the appropriate time, the tower controller will clear you for takeoff. Cessna 740, runway 17 left, cleared for takeoff. Cessna 740. When you receive a clearance with the word immediate in it, you should follow the instructions without delay. Warrior 312 cleared for immediate takeoff. Where radar is available, the controller may request that you contact departure control. Cessna 740, contact departure control. Because you are being handed off from the tower to departure control, the controller is expecting your transmission. Thus, your initial contact is very brief. Sudden departure, Cessna 62740, climbing through 6,000 for 7,500. Cessna 740, ident. The controller will let you know that he has identified your aircraft and will provide you with appropriate instructions. Cessna 740, radar contact. Report reaching 7,500. You are strongly encouraged to use VFR radar services when available because of the added safety provided. The level of service varies with the type of facility. Basic radar service provides participating VFR aircraft with traffic advisories and limited vectoring. The controller may help you spot traffic by letting you know its approximate location relative to your airplane. 
Other radar services, such as sequencing and separation, are used at busy airports to help controllers guide both IFR and VFR aircraft smoothly. When a controller issues a traffic advisory, it is given in relation to a 12-hour clock, with 12 o'clock aligned with your ground track. For example, Cessna 740, traffic 1 o'clock, 2 miles. A Cessna 7500, eastbound. If you are turned into the wind to maintain your ground track, the actual location of the traffic may be different than that given by the controller. In this example, the traffic is actually at your 2 o'clock position. When you're trying to locate the reported traffic, consider your ground track and encompass a wider range in your scan. Let the controller know whether or not you have spotted the traffic. If you don't see the traffic, tell the controller negative contact and continue to look. Keep in mind that traffic advisories do not relieve you of the responsibility of maintaining your normal scan for collision avoidance. When you leave the radar coverage area, the controller will let you know that the service is no longer being provided and will have you reset your transponder for VFR flight. Cessna 740, radar service terminated. Resume your own navigation, squawk 1200. Now let's turn our attention to some of the procedures and communications for an arrival at a controlled airport. If you're arriving at an airport with an operating control tower, it is a good practice to make your initial call up approximately 15 miles from the airport. Before you enter Class D airspace, you must establish and maintain radio communications with the tower. A clearance from ATC is required before you enter Class B airspace. Your initial call-up should be outside of the Class B boundary and over a designated visual checkpoint. These points are shown on aeronautical charts and will be covered in depth in the section on charts. If you're approaching an airport in Class C airspace, you must establish two-way radio communications with ATC before entering the outer circle. You are strongly encouraged to make the initial call within the outer area. Let's take a closer look at the procedures for entering Class C airspace. Listen to the ATIS as you approach the 20-mile outer area. Jensen Airport, Information Sierra. 1445 Zulu weather, temperature 76, dew point 44, wind 160 at one. Plan your approach so that your initial contact with ATC can be made when you are above a designated visual checkpoint or prominent landmark. Jensen approach, Cessna 62740, over Prospect Reservoir at 8000 with Sierra, landing Jensen. Cessna 740, stand by. Since the controller used your call sign, radio communications have been established. This means you can continue on course and enter the Class C airspace. If the controller uses the words, Aircraft calling Jensen approach, stand by. Radio communications have not been established, and you must remain clear of the Class C airspace. In most cases, the controller will give you a transponder code and ask you to ident. Cessna 740, radar contact, 23 miles northeast of Jensen, turn left, heading 220 for left base, runway 17. As you near the airport, approach control will let you know when or where to contact the tower. Cessna 740, 5 miles northeast of Jensen, contact the tower 119.9. -er. Cessna 740, tower on 119.9. -er. Jensen Tower, Cessna 62740, 5 miles northeast for left base runway 17. At airports with an operating control tower, you must obtain a clearance to land. Cessna 740, cleared to land, runway 17. You may also receive additional instructions after landing. Cessna 740, next available taxiway, contact ground, point 7. Cessna 740, roger. Jensen Ground, Cessna 62740, clear of 17 at Alpha 1, request clearance to General Aviation Ramp. 
Cessna 740, taxi to general aviation ramp via Alpha. As you gain experience, your knowledge and understanding of the ATC system will grow. You'll discover how easy it is to communicate effectively with air traffic controllers. And you'll learn to make efficient use of the services provided by ATC and radar.